Thanks, Rufus. <clears throat> Absolutely delighted to be here. Um, so thank you for having me. It's really um, my first trip uh, to Warsaw, and, uh, and I'm uh, thrilled to be here and to be asked to, to do this morning session for you. So um, the Sunlight Foundation is a five-year-old nonprofit based in Washington. So look at the granddaddy in this room, maybe, in terms of the, the open data, uh, open gov movement. Um, and we, uh, we were really unique when we were founded in Washington in particular because we believed in the power of technology to bring data alive, to engage citizens, um, and to provide new tools and resources for media life. And, and this is the topic I want to talk about, and I really want to emphasize what Rufus said, which is <clears throat> data, qua data, is really important. And I actually happen to think that it's a public good in and of itself but it is insufficient to causing the kinds of change that we want to see happen. Um, Sunlight has a particular policy agenda. It may or may not be others' policy agenda. But in terms of uh, advancing where we want to, uh, the need for data to underlie all kinds of changes that are required in the US and globally, the data has to be open. It has to be accessible. It has to be available. So quickly, a bit about Sunlight. We take our inspiration from this man, um, Justice Louis Brandeis, former, um, long time ago, US Justice, who once said, sunlight is said to be the best of disinfectants. And political reform, which is at the heart of our own agenda, very, very difficult to achieve. And in the interim, sunlight on the information may be as far as we can go. But that means something very different in the 21st century. We are committed to improving access to all government information by making it available online, indeed redefining what public information means, meaning, in fact, that it's online. So um, I'm thrilled to be here, and you'll hear tomorrow from um, my longtime friend and colleague, Andrew Roche of the Personal Democracy Forum from New York. And Andrew, very early on in Sunlight's history, said, you know, technology is not um, a slice of the pie. It's actually the pan. And it's really, really important. I know that's preaching to the choir here, but in Washington, it is not preaching to the choir. Uh, technology informs both the vision and the operation of a transparent government, and it empowers the tools of accountability for citizens. Sunlight's work falls into four basic categories. Uh, the first is data, policy, tools, and organizing. People want to know, how does Sunlight get put together? Well, this is just the basics um, of it. Uh, by data, we mean developing databases. Uh, we support other people to build databases. We build databases ourselves. We do everything from taking paper records and having it uh, digitized to scraping websites. And obviously, we prefer the latter. Um, by tools, we build lots of tools. And I'm going to show you a few of those uh, to make it easy for activists, journalists, and what we define as the online active citizen to find use, consume the data for whatever purpose they're interested in. Um, we're interested in the impact it can have on how government operates, on political uh, influence, uh, uncovering political influence, on activism, and on citizenship. So we build lots of tools. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Um, Rufus talked about uh, developing community. It's been a huge priority for Sunlight. And, we do it uh, from our technical shop, which we call Sunlight Labs, to um, the average, as I said, online active citizen, to people who didn't even know that they cared about a transparent and open government. But they sure care about what happens to, what, what's happened on Wall Street and what that means to them. That transparency is becoming a much bigger issue, I think, around the world, people understanding it. We provide these users with training, marketing, distributed research projects to engage in contest to foster a broader and wider adaption um, of our data and tools, or anyone's data and tools. Under policy, and my colleague John Wunderlich is here. John can wave his hand. Many of you may already know John. Um, ultimately, we believe that transparency is government's responsibility. So advocating for changes in how government uh, functions is absolutely core and central to, um, to what we uh, are doing. I think that was actually a little bit premature. No, actually, we're right on top. So technology, technology. Here are a few projects that we've built very quickly. 
this is the I don't all then I don't remember the total number of websites we now have and operate, but it's something like 30. We knew we were in trouble when in the first 18 months of Sunlight's existence we had built 18. Um, and we're trying to consolidate now. This is one of our most popular, it's done as a joint project with the Participatory Politics Foundation called Open Congress. It's one of the first, what I generally would call open parliament sites now. Very, very rich uh, in terms of the kind of information, but also increasingly rich in terms of how you can use this as an organizing tool. Um, whether you're an independent uh, actor or a nonprofit organization. So opencongress.org. It was such a good idea. We decided we would build one out for all the states, for each state. Um, we built six as experiments. Uh, they seem to be working just fine, and we just received funding to build out most of the rest of them. Uh, so we're very excited about building this out on a state level. Um, another site um, called Subsidy Scope. This was a site that's actually not a Sunlight project. This is a project of Pew Charitable Trust, a major foundation in the US. Uh, Caitlin Lee is in charge of this project. Caitlin is here. She should wave her hand. This is a project to actually try to figure out what kinds of government subsidies, who are they given to, and, and ultimately, I think, to figure out the efficacy of government subsidies. Until we tried to build this sector by sector, no one had really any idea unless they could find those books that you could hardly lift or you could never understand. So Caitlin is here, you should talk with her about this project. Government subsidies, obviously a huge issue. Um, clear spending, this is a project that Caitlin is also in charge of. Um, we wondered how good the government data actually was on government spending. And the answer is, it's not a pretty picture. Again, if you want to know how bad it is, it's $1.3 trillion worth of bad reporting. That's about half of all the reporting. Seems to be inaccurate. It's not great. It's real money. Um, Sunlight began to experiment in this space, in the mobile space. Uh, we built both an iPhone app and an Android app. You may not believe these figures, but the labs team swears they're true. The Android app has been downloaded 400,000 times. And we thought that was an astounding number. Um, it really shows the promise. And I said, you know, but it's one thing to download an app. I never use it again. I may use it once. So we're now monitoring how many times it's used in the US, 50 to 70,000 times a week. So this sector obviously has tremendous uh, promise for us. Um, much of Sunlight's work is devoted to bringing sunshine to the what we call accountability and influence data so we can understand all the money that's at play in American politics. And as you know, it's fairly significant, not that it's insignificant in Europe uh, or anywhere else around the world. So we have a number of sites that we, um, we uh, try to bring this data together. I call this, this is called transparency data. This is our data holding tank. So it mashes together the federal and state campaign finance data. No one had ever done that before. And then we're adding all kinds of influence data, but we're also adding, uh, adding corporate accountability data so we can tell what a profile looks like of a corporation. Um, so, but this is pretty wonky. If you're a developer, you'd like this, or if you're a high-end journalist user, you'd like this. But I need this. It's called Influence Explorer, single search engine through all of that data. Um, uh, so it, this works not only for federal data, it also works for state data as well. Um, that site's pretty cool, Influence Explorer, but Polygraph is probably my personal favorite of the things that we've built. Uh, this is a website that uses the Reuters Calais utility to find entries in any news story and then queries that database and exposes the connection. So you can put any blog post, you can put any New York Times or any article through it. Probably will not work in Polish, um, but it does work in English. So it's a fascinating story behind the story website. It's a bookmarklet that we developed. Maybe this is my favorite, actually. This is called Inbox Influence, and it's a terrible slide. Um, but what it does is it brings the money and politics, the campaign contribution, the lobbying information into your Gmail account by uh, dynamically comparing the people and organizations in your, in, who are writing to you um, against campaign donation records. And for the first couple of days when this, uh, we had this up and running in the office, no one did any work at all because we were astonished to learn, and my spouse is here, I can say this, 
who my spouse had been giving political money to, who my daughter seemed to be giving $30,000 to. Of course, she hadn't. It was a mistake in the data. But nonetheless, it was a pretty astonishing couple of days. Uh, and finally, to be honest, I had to turn it off because I couldn't get any work done. Uh, but fascinating because we were able to bring money and politics, campaign finance data, to people who didn't even know they cared about it until they saw who their spouses were giving to. Other sites, party time, this is political fundraising data. These are documents that are essentially leaked to Sunlight. Gives us all kinds of information. Another project called Sunlight Live, where we monitor live events. We're building this out as an open platform now, so we don't have to cover them all. Um, I also want to share a couple of ways that Sunlight has been an active advocate for government transparency because we pay, play a bit of a tricky role here. We try whatever possible to help the government take full responsibility. It's not the NGO sector whose responsibility it is to open up the data. It's actually government's responsibility. And we're also very willing to criticize the government um, when it fails in its responsibilities. And Rufus talked about this earlier also. We fight for stronger campaign finance and lobbying laws and open data generally in order to bring the information to the light of scrutiny. We're interested in accountability for government. And while there's an existing world of NGOs, some of which I have previously founded, who also work on these similar issues, we are the only one that actually focuses on the, the power of technology um, and what that means in terms of openness and transparency. Our advocacy informs our technology, and our technology informs our advocacy. So we're delighted to be here in Warsaw. Flickr's wonderful, right? <laughs> you can find a photo of anybody doing anything on Flickr. Um, so that's John, in case you didn't know, John Wunderlich and Kate and Lee, and yours truly. Um, but because we're thrilled to be part of what's happening around the world. We see approaches that Sunlight is pursuing um, uh, popping up um, all over the world. We are learning from what's happening um, uh, around the world and that the, the notion of an accountable government is, doesn't have any boundaries anymore as we know from the new Open Government <coughs> Partnership. Uh, for our part, we've learned that the projects works best when they balance the understanding of how government works <coughs> and the willingness on part of the NGOs to be just a little bit radical, think certainly outside of the box. We, um, we often work alongside government, as I said, and sometimes we do our work in spite of government. Um, both approaches, that push and that pull, are essential, we think. One of the most important assets of, uh, of our understanding is what technology makes possible, and we're, we're, I think we're teaching government um, about that. And our ability to praise is as important as our ability to criticize. Uh, we're only beginning to see what this world is, is looking like. And I just want to just sort of say that we're thrilled to, to play a small part in that. We see ourselves as colleagues um, with everyone um, around the world. And as our work expands into the global context, um, we are thrilled and delighted to share our beliefs, our practices, what's working in the U.S., what's not working in the U.S., and learn from you. Because we believe that armed with more access to all kinds of data, citizens can play a more productive and active role in self-government. This is what gets us up every single morning. Thank you very much.